cameras are essential gadgets in modern life. Nowadays, every smartphone, tablet, or laptop has at least one. They are sometimes affordable and can deliver high-quality images and videos with little effort on our side. It can be analog or digital, large or tiny, completely automatic or manual. In this video, I will be sharing with you the history of the camera and how it has evolved over the years. So ensure you watch till the end. Before I continue to the history of camera, if you are new to Inventions Flex, please subscribe below and turn on the notification so that you don't miss out on our great videos on ancient and modern tech inventions. Haven't said that, let's dive back in. The history of the camera began long before the boom of the digital world. The first cameras were nothing like the modern ones, but each proved a principle and took photography one step closer to what it is today. The forerunner to the photographic camera was the camera obscura. Camera obscura, which is a Latin word for dark room, is the natural optical phenomenon that occurs when an image of a scene on the other side of a screen or a wall is projected through a small hole in that screen and forms an inverted image on a surface opposite to the opening. It was used around the middle of the 16th century as a way of indirectly looking at eclipses or studying astronomical phenomena, as an aid in drawing and painting, and as entertainment. Camera Obscura represents one of the first attempts at understanding and making use of light's reflection and refraction properties. Camera Obscura wasn't a camera until 1816 when Joseph Nicephor Niepce used it to create the first ever photograph. What Niepce did was find a way to record the image projected by the camera obscura. He used a light-sensitive material called bitumen of Judea, or asphalt of Syria, a semi-solid oil, and mixed it with pewter. The result was a permanent image that would survive after the camera obscura was closed. He named his method heliography, which translates as sun drawing. Niepce experimented with other materials as well, such as lavender oil distillate, and it seems he was convinced silver was a good choice. He became a partner with Louis Daguerre in 1829 and passed the torch for the next stage in the history of the camera. Louis Daguerre was a French artist and photographer known for his invention of the daguerreotype process of photography. He became known as one of the fathers of photography. Louis Daguerre's partner Nicephore Niepce died suddenly in 1833, but he continued, improved, and finally changed Niepce's process completely. In 1839, he announced a new photographic process named after him called the daguerreotype. Unlike heliography, the daguerreotype produces a much better image quality, requires less exposure time, and is portable. Thus, Louis Daguerre wasn't limited to capturing landscapes. He could photograph people, still life, and street views. This made his process popular in a very short amount of time. The French government bought the rights and presented the daguerreotype as a gift to the world. Although very popular, the daguerreotype wasn't for the masses as just a few people could afford the camera and necessary materials. In 1839, soon after the launch of the daguerreotype, Alphonse Giroux produced the first camera to use plates from the shelf. And many argue that this is the first photographic camera. Giroux created a daguerreotype camera that used standardized plates one could buy in different sizes. It had an exposure time of 5 to 30 minutes and cost around $7,000 in today's money. It wasn't cheap, but it was accessible. Also in 1839, Henry Fox Talbot presented something called a film. Instead of using daguerreotype plates, he used writing paper soaked in table salt and covered in silver nitrate. The photographs were blurrier than the ones made by a daguerreotype, and the method, called calotype, didn't catch the public's attention. Nevertheless, it was the first mention of a photographic film and the first step toward using paper instead of plates. Besides the minute long exposure time and expensive gear, the daguerreotype image faded fast. 
You couldn't hope the portrait of a family member will outlast them. Therefore, in 1840, American Alexander Simon Woolcott presented a daguerreotype camera that didn't have a lens. Instead, it had a concave reflecting mirror and was, for that reason, called a mirror camera. Woolcott used the mirror to reflect light onto a plate sensitive to light and produced a positive image. Later on, he and his partner Johnson improved the photosensitive plate by using a mix of bromide and chloride that accelerated the process and developed a lighting method that used outdoor mirrors to reflect light inside the studio. The use of the mirror reduced the sitting time for a portrait from 30 minutes to 5 minutes and increased the lifetime of the photograph. The natural next step for Woolcott and Johnson was to open a portrait studio in New York City, a world's first, followed by a branch in Washington, D.C., and one in England. The mirror camera was the beginning of commercial photography. 1871, Richard Leach Maddox found a way to make the developing process faster and healthier. Affected by the chemical vapor used in the developing process, Maddox started experimenting with a gelatin emulsion. It was a complete success. First of all, gelatin dry plates didn't require preparations. Anyone could get them from the store and use them immediately. Then, they didn't have to be developed immediately, could be made in smaller sizes, and supported faster exposure times. By 1878, Charles Harper Bennett had already created the first gelatin dry plates for sale and decreased the exposure time to 125 second. From the gelatin dry plates to celluloid film was only one step, and it was George Eastman's contribution to photography. In 1888, Eastman manufactured and started selling a camera named Kodak. It used a roll film and allowed for 100 exposures. Then, the photographer would send the box camera to the Kodak factory for development. A Kodak camera costs $25. It was affordable, much easier to use than previous cameras, and accessible to anyone. Kodak's slogan was, You press the button, we do the rest. In 1900, Kodak released a new model, the Kodak Brownie, which was even simpler and less expensive than the first model. Everyone afforded to record their memories, and not just family portraits. People started photographing events, vacations, places they were visiting, and anything that captured their interest. The developing process became less expensive. In a few years, photography was accessible to the masses as a leisure activity. Eastman became one of the richest men in the U.S., Kodak remained at the top of the photography industry for almost a century and is still around today. We owe the 35mm film to a German inventor and photographer called Oskar Barnack and to Leica. In 1913, the inventor was experimenting with the 35 by 35mm motion picture film, aiming to make it useful for photography as well. The 35mm film is a 35 by 2435 mm film roll in a protective cassette that allows for a fixed number of exposures. Initially, it had 36 exposures. Instead of sending the entire camera to be developed, now you would be sending only the film. Furthermore, any camera manufacturer could launch a camera that used 35 by 35 mm film. And so they did. Today's standard for analog photography was adopted by Kodak in 1934. Many others followed. Twin reflex cameras have two identical lenses, same focal length, vertically arranged. The one at the bottom will take the photo, while the one at the top will be the viewing lens. The TLRs aim to provide the same image through the viewfinder as the recorded photo. Although the technology of SLR cameras, single lens reflex, has been available since 1861 thanks to Thomas Sutton, building SLR cameras was too complicated and expensive. So the first camera models, such as Kodak and Leica, were TLR cameras. TLR cameras were popular for about 40 years, between 1920 and 1960. They were left behind by modern cameras. At the time, they provided interchangeable lenses, a leaf-type shutter that made possible variable shutter speeds and flash sync, reliable and silent mechanisms, and a funny boxy design. 
SLR cameras became popular after the Second World War because of technological advances, and they have never left the scene since. A digital SLR camera is an SLR camera that uses an electronic sensor instead of photographic film. Early attempts to build a DSLR include 1. Kodak's engineer Steven Sasson in 1975, a 4 kilo camera with a 0.01 megapixel resolution and a 23 seconds exposure time. 2. Sony Mavica in 1981, with a color-striped 2 or 3 inch format CCD sensor with 2 at 80K pixels and analog signal processing and recording. 3. Canon RC701 in 1986, with a 2 3-inch format color CCD sensor with 380K pixels, and 4. Nikon E-Series in 1995. However, the first full digital professional DSLR camera was Nikon D1, launched in 1999. The first consumer-level DSLR, FinePix S1 Pro, was launched a year later by Fujifilm. The 21st century brought an explosion of innovation and technological advances that made DSLR cameras more performing, reliable, versatile, and affordable. They feature optical viewfinders, manual and automatic focus mechanisms, interchangeable lenses, ultra-fast and ultra-slow shutter speeds, astonishing photo resolutions, LCD screens, and more. A mirrorless camera doesn't have a reflex mirror that flips between serving the viewfinder and projecting the image onto the sensor. As a result, mirrorless cameras don't have an optical viewfinder, but an electronic one. Nevertheless, they are smaller, more compact, lighter, and more silent. However, nowadays they offer similar sensor sizes, lens variety, image quality, and maneuverability as DSLR cameras. Deciding between a mirrorless camera and a DSLR is more a matter of preference than technical requirements. Now you know the history of the camera. Do like, share, and subscribe for more historic inventions. See you in the next video.